Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Blanca and this is my garden. Uh, you guys, today's video is gonna cover um, a few different things. Last video I posted and I asked um, if you guys wanted to see like more care videos, and it was incredible the response that I got. Lots of you want to see uh, like the fertilizers I use and how I take care of orchids, even like what the orchid um, names are and, and all that. So today's video is going to be a little bit of that, just a little bit of everything. Um, towards the middle of this video, maybe I will be showing you all of the, all of the um, fertilizers that I use and what I use to treat for thrips and all that. But before I do that, I just want to kind of walk the garden and show you brand new blooms also if before i forget tomorrow uh saturday november uh, november my goodness where am i tomorrow saturday march 13th um fairchild botanical garden is having their orchid event uh, lots of us awesome vendors will be there i will be there um tomorrow saturday the 13th so if you want to swing by uh, you can get the tickets at the door and it's a fun show and it's a beautiful beautiful venue beautiful place Anyway, so let's start here with my fowls. Um, these Phalaenopsis orchids are mounted on my palms. They love it. They are in, sometimes in the direct sun, depending on where they're located in the garden. And they bloom nonstop. Now these that I have attached, I almost never water and almost never fertilize. Not that they don't need water. It's just that um, since they're out here and I do live in South Florida, it rains a lot. Uh, so I let the rain water them. If I see that it hasn't been raining for a long time, I will come out here with a hose and give them a good spray. But other than that, they do their thing. They love it. And they are very healthy. Um, if I have some leftover fertilizer, which I rarely never do, um, I will just spray a little bit, not too much. So that's, um, that's the care that I give the mounted Phalaenopsis. Uh, same thing goes to my dendrobiums. My dendrobium nobilis are around my garden. They get watered when it rains and they hardly ever, ever, ever get fertilized. And they are happy. Look at that beautiful show here. And amazing, amazing dendrobium nobilis right here. I mean, these smell fantastic, you guys. Look at what a beautiful beautiful orchid she is so these dendrobium nobilis i did get a while ago some of them let's see if it's in, it's in focus here some of them i got um i got at shows when i went last year and others were shipped to me um from carmela orchids the care that i give these nobilis is the same as i do my fowls hardly ever water and never hardly fertilize and they live happily attached so these are attached always upside down um, because they are top heavy but once they start um, acclimating and they start growing they will find their way up towards the sun so all of these here were all mounted upside down all right so these are some of the fresh blooms that i wanted to show you so turning the corner over here my gumbo limbo tree on this gumbo limbo, I have mounted oncidiums, which are, and some fowls, <laughs> and an encyclia all the way over there. Um, but I have mounted oncidiums mainly. I have a sherry baby right over here that's just coming out of bloom. Oop, there you go. These are the last of her flowers, just coming out of bloom. And um, same thing, never fertilize, never water, unless it's like a drought. Now turning the corner here, I've got a zygo, which I do keep potted inside a clay pot. But since she's all the way over here and she's almost fading too, but she does smell amazing, you guys. Let's see. Um, since she is potted, I can, I can um, bring her down and fertilize her as I do all my other orchids. Um, but to be honest, <laughs> I have not because I forget, you know, I, I even forget that she's here. Um, and she's happy, so she must be getting enough of um, what she needs, exactly how, um, how she's placed and where she's at. And these hardly get, you know, when you're out in my garden and you're so far 
believe me, sometimes I forget about you. But you know what? They're they're so resilient and they're such good plants that they don't need so much care. The ones that are mounted at least. These are more more of the dendrobium nobilis. Alright, so walking to my orchid section, and there you can see where I have the little setup for me to show you everything that I use. Um, here I have my Cattleyas mounted. And I was so surprised to see that I've got some buds growing on my Sarah Palin Hockey Mom. So that's gonna be that's gonna be really beautiful when she blooms. She's a little bit late this year. Normally I get blooms from her in November, but I am so excited about those flowers. I've got more nobilies on this side. And I've got my potted orchids right here. And then I've got some more of Catmeas here in bud. Let's just take a peek here how these buds are doing. Look at that. And then my maxillaria. All right, so let's get started. Well, let's let's go over here and show you my vandas really quick. I just want to show you all the new blooms and how they're doing. So my Vanda Pachera Delight ended up opening up beautifully. I really thought the thrips was getting to her since I did see some damage in the le in the flowers. But this is a gorgeous Vanda Pachera Delight. She's not fragrant, but her color and her beauty makes up for her being scentless, fragranceless. <laughs> she is a beauty. And then I have my Vanda Crystal Smith from Motes. It's opening up nicely. She is a beautiful Vanda. Look at that, look how pretty. And then under here, you've seen these all in my, in my last videos. My Vanda Denisionana, 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 I always say that wrong, is right here. Beautiful. And then I've got her hybrids right down over here. And then my little pixie dust. And then of course my beautiful Vanda Tabitat, which is still in bloom. All right, so all of these Vandas here, and this is gonna go back to um, kind of like an orchid care. Um, all of these Vandas down here, I have them bare root. So yes, I do have to water them every single day because their roots get really, really dry. I mean, you could see how dry they are already and they were already watered this morning. Um, so every single day I have to water them if it's really, really hot, you want to do it twice a day. In the summertime, I do it twice a day where I come out here in the morning and then late afternoon and give them a double water, you know, with the hose. And then if the sprinklers, the sprinklers are on, I won't, I won't water them in the afternoon because that's normally when the sprinklers go on. All right, and then, here we go. These are the buds from this one. And then this one, of course, has got some thrips. So now let's go, let me show you what I use. All right, so on top of this table, I have everything that I use when I fertilize or treat my orchids. This right here is new. So um, you guys, I mean, if some of you guys don't know, um, I do make candles um, for a living. I am a candle maker. So um, after spending so many hours in my candle room, I invested in buying one of these guys, which is um, a respirator. And I am, I am using this now when I fertilize. So these fertilizers, especially the orthene, is very, very strong. So if you have um, like a mask or even if you, you probably wouldn't have a respirator, but if you want to get one to fertilize, I mean, this respirator is amazing. Um, you cannot smell anything. I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's a little bit uncomfortable, um, especially on hot days, um, but this has really helped when I fertilize. So you guys were wondering what this is this is a respirator and i got this on amazon so anyway um before i didn't i never fertilized with anything like this but since i got it for making candles i just decided to also use it when i fertilize since everything is so strong um especially the orthene um when i treat for thrips so since i'm talking about thrips let's start with that so um when i get thrips which is and i'm gonna go up here really quick it is when you know you have thrips when your um, flower spikes uh, start drying up as soon as they start growing. They start turning brown and they start drying up. 
you know that you've got those little insects just sucking the life out of your flower spike. And that's an indication that you have thrips. Another way you can know you have thrips is when your flowers are marked, when they are, you know, when they come out with little markings, they look dry, they look not, they don't look healthy. You see that? That's thrips right there. See how dry that is? So as soon as I see that in my garden, um, I start treating, sorry, I don't realize how fast I move um, when I'm recording. I start treating um, with orthene and what I do is that, and I already have to get a new orthene because look at how, how that's rusted up there. All right, so what I do is that I use, um, depending on the area that I'm gonna treat, I, do, I, do, I either do half a teaspoon or one teaspoon per gallon of the orthene. And I, I like to use this sprayer right here, which um, I connect it right to the hose. And then I'll put like one, one half a teaspoon or one teaspoon, depending on how much I wanna use. And then I fill it up to the one gallon line. And then I do that depending on, like I said, depending on, I mean, if I'm gonna do three gallons of water, I'll use, you know, three half teaspoons of the orthene or three full teaspoons of the orthene. So um, that's what I use for thrips. Now for fertilizing, I use the same um, little insecticide spray that I connect on my hose. And this you can get at, um, at Amazon. For fertilizing, I use every week, and this is gonna be for anything that it's potted. So my Vandas, I use the 2020-20 um, the fertilizer, which is the Jack's All Purpose. This is every week, or it should be every week, but I've been slacking lately, especially the weather. The weather really hasn't let me um, fertilize as much. So um, I do use a Jack's Classic 2020-20, and I will use a full teaspoon for my Vandas which is a heavy feed, and I will go with a half a teaspoon for all of my other potted orchids, which are right, right there. And that's all that measurement is per gallon of water. So I do the Jack's 20, 20, 20. I always use Epsom salt. Epsom salt and every, every single time I fertilize with the 20, 20, 20, I do a quarter teaspoon of the um, the Epsom salt and then every other week I use one teaspoon of seaweed kelp so again I use every week either half or one teaspoon of the Jack's 20 20 20 a quarter teaspoon of the Epsom salt and one full teaspoon of the organic kelp and I use this every two weeks so every other time that I fertilize and then I combine it all in here and that's all combined um, in one gallon of water. Um, now, once every three weeks, instead of using the 20, 20, 20, I'll use the Bloom Booster. And unfortunately, this Bloom Booster, it's like all, it's all faded. Actually, this is not even the Bloom Booster, but I use a Bloom Booster, which you can also um, get, look for the all-purpose um, Jack's Bloom Booster. I can't remember right now what the numbers here are, but um, the middle number is gonna be a lot bigger. I hope, I hope I'm saying that right, but um, it'll say Bloom Booster on it. And I use that every three weeks. So use it once a month and I use it on the third week. Uh, what else? So that this is how I, what I use to fertilize and this is what I use when I have thrips. Um, fungicide, I use something else. I didn't bring it out here, which is the thiol mill. Um, unfortunately, I don't use anything that's organic because this stuff really works right away and it works really, really good. And using a respirator, of course, made my life a lot easier, so I'm not so scared to use it um, that much anymore. Uh, so anyways, this is right here what I use. If you need any specifics, um, leave it in the comment section and I'll try to answer, but um, this is just like a general idea of what I use to fertilize. And like I said, Vanda's always a heavy feed and I try to do that once a week. And my other orchids, which are all of these potted, I do um, half a feed, I do um, half a teaspoon. And that's it. Now my Miltoniopsis in my bathroom, I, do, I only do once a month, very little, a quarter teaspoon. So it just all depends what kind of orchids and what kind of um, care they, they, they need to thrive and all that. So that's it, you guys. <laughs> it, this was a, an earful. Um, I hope to see you guys tomorrow at, um, at the show. Fairchild Botanical Garden starts at 10 a.m., runs until four. Uh, like I said, they're gonna have um, tickets for sale at the door, so. If you're just hearing about that event, you can always purchase tickets at the door. So that's today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. So much information, uh, but I'm, I'm trying to make the videos depending on what you guys like to watch. 
and this was one that was requested a lot last last video so i hope that you enjoyed it you have any, if you have any questions comments concerns or anything leave it in the comment section below and i will try to answer and that's it thank you for watching hope you guys have a wonderful weekend hope to see some of you guys tomorrow and i will see you soon in my next video bye bye